Hello and welcome to this film on valuing private companies. It's a really important topic, James, and it's your area of expertise. Where do we start? Sure. So I think when it comes to valuing private companies, there's three key things we're thinking about. The first of those is the resource that we put to it and the governance around it. The second is the frequency and how often do we deal with valuations and f factor market volatility. Mm -hmm. And then the third is the modelling itself. So w what's actually driving the numbers in the end? Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's a really important topic and I want to reassure the audience about how robust and uh, uh, our process is. So let's bring it to life, bring those three points to life by mm. uh, taking a, 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 a private company through the journey of, valu of valuation. So sure. private company A, where do we start? Sure, so I think the, that point of transaction, the point of investment is always going to be your, your starting point. We want to make sure that we're comfortable, it's, it's arm's length, who is involved, the quantums. Uh, a lot of these companies are later stage, it's substantial rounds with numerous investors which, which helps with that. Uh, and then from there we want to build it into our valuation schedule and that's where we start to bring in our independent external input through okay. S&P. What is our schedule for valuing private companies? So the, the, fall, the fundamental is always that we will value everything at least once per quarter. Every private company? Every private company at least once per quarter and S&P will come into that. They will review it all once per quarter. Okay, so who's S&P? What do they do? So they're an external uh, firm. They're a financial firm that, that provide numerous services, but valuations is one of them. So they, they look at equity valuations uh, for, for numerous people, and they, including for us. So they will assess all of our holdings. Okay. So they send in a list of valuations for our private companies, and then your team steps in and, and starts their work. Exactly. So the, we'll, we'll scrutinise everything we get from them, we'll, we'll challenge the approach, but also we're double checking all the data, everything that's actually driving that end result. Who's on your team that does this, by the way? Uh, so in the operational team, we've got a number of analysts um, uh, and a manager that, that help uh, look through all those reports uh, that, that come from financial background uh, to that have a lot of experience in looking at these valuations. Okay, and are the investment managers, those who make the decisions, part of that team? No, so okay. that's that's the important part around not marking our own homework. So we we keep that separate. We're completely independent from the investment floor. Um, we will liaise with them to make sure we have all the news that have, from these companies and that we understand what's going on. But other than that, the valuations are driven okay. separately. So S and P Global give you a valuation for company A. You then check it against your own thinking about company A. And what happens when you disagree? So we'll put our challenge to S and P, um, and you know, we'll, whether it be data related or approach related, they can rebut that and and challenge, or or they may take on board what we've said and 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 change it, but only if they're comfortable. Fun okay. Fundamentally, this is their opinion. So how do you come up with evaluation? What sort of things do you look at? It's it's all really around the fundamentals of the company. So performance, the financials, what what's actually happening, but the milestones as well. So. Um, you know, are they achieving the things we thought they would um, or have they missed deadlines? Um, they're key factors, as is the broader external markets. So looking at p uh, peer set, looking at the, the uh, listed markets, um, what's changed in terms of market sentiment. Uh -huh. So you have a, a list of similar companies or related companies in the public space, of so listed companies, and, and see how they've moved. What if they don't have, what if private company A doesn't have a, a peer in the pub public markets? Yeah, and that Often, often the case, and that that's where the challenge comes in, and that's about uh, you know thinking outside the box, looking for companies that overlap in specific ways. So they might not be exactly the same, but do they have the same growth trajectory? Do they have the same margins? Are they operating in the same uh, you know industry? And building a set that overall captures all of those elements, okay. and so you're you're you, you're you have the market sentiment influencing from different angles. Okay, so. You and S&P Global have now agreed on a the price, then what happens? Then it comes to the, the, the Private Companies Valuations Committee, which is part of the internal valuations process and governance structure at Bailey Gifford. Again, this is an entirely independent mm -hmm. function within the valuations process. None of the valuations committee are on the investment floor, so it's another arm's length independent scrutiny and challenge mm -hmm. of both S&P's work, but also the, inter the internal valuations work yeah. that, that James's team does. And the valuations committee has to then 
further rubber stamp and approve all of the valuations that, that come past the group and we meet monthly mm -hmm. to interrogate and, and challenge those valuations that, that we see and provide different insight from, from our roles around Bailey Gifford. Okay, so that's it then. We get to that point uh, and that's, that's the valuation done. Company A is worth X billion dollars. If only. There, there is then further levels to the governance, which is an important part of the process and something we take a lot of confidence from. So the fact a lot of these companies are held by investment trusts, you've then got a further, two further layers of governance really there. You've got your, your boards, independent boards that each of these trusts have, so completely external to Bailey Gifford itself. They will review all of these valuations every six months. So they will, they will see everything we see, they see the full reports, the, any backup they want, uh, and they'll challenge the investments, uh, the valuations themselves. That then goes through audit. So you've, each of those trusts ha have, the, there's different auditors involved. We've got four different external firms. So like PwC, KPMG, et cetera, those yeah, sort of so big. Three of the big four uh, uh, are, and different teams from within them as well. Mm -hmm. And I think importantly, also at different times in the year. So the, the year ends for our, for our trusts are, are many and varied. Uh, so the, we have a lot of investments, so we, some of the examples you named earlier, a lot of our investments are held in numerous portfolios. So they're being scrutinized by boards uh, and different boards mm -hmm. and have different auditors looking at them at multiple points in the year. So company A could be held in four or five different investment trusts and vehicles yep. which look at it in their year ends, whether that's March, April, June, August, September. Yep. And they do that twice a year because they do half years as well and they have in different um, auditors which then also look at it. And can they challenge and change the valuation as well? Absolutely. So the, the boards, they, they have to be comfortable with, with the valuations. If, if they're not, then it's, they, they, can, they can change the valuations to what they see as appropriate and that's what the auditors will then sign off on. Great. So that happens um, as a standard once every quarter, but what about in really volatile or, or uh, periods or if something news comes in just after you value private company A, what happens then that changes that thought? So the, that's where the, the sort of frequency and the modelling is key, so we think about trigger events. So we are always monitoring within the team to see has an event happened that might shift the value of a company. So financial performance outside expectations, milestones being hit or market volatility, so has the, the comparable companies, have we seen a, an upward or a downward shift since we last valued? Mm -hmm. And making sure that the, we're reflecting that in the valuation and updating in as close to real time as we can. Have you marked your own homework at any point and how accurate are you with your valuations process? Yes, well, what we've essentially had is the market marking our homework. So we have these price discovery events um, and by that we mean uh, effectively transactional activity. So a company raises new equity, it is acquired, it might be listing. Either way, the market has attached a value to the right. company. So somewhere in the public, away from us, a company's raised money or has been acquired and their price has, yeah. has been publicly stated, this is worth this. Exactly. Yeah. So we'll, whenever that happens, we'll look at the valuations we have in place. What, what, what was it, how was it trending? Where were we before that happened? To see uh, you know, how, how we fared. And importantly, what we want to see is a mix. We want to see sometimes we've had to, you're never gonna get valuations perfect. They are estimates. But sometimes you wanna see it go up a bit, sometimes down a bit. If you're always going up or you're always going down, that's a sign of bias in your process. So you might always be too aggressive or you might always be too conservative. Um, and that's what we've seen. So we, if we take the last 15 transactions or price discovery events that we've seen, we've had 10 we've had to mark up a little bit and five we've had to mark down. And the average uh, movement we've seen taking it across all the 15 is about a 10% uplift mm -hmm. following a price discovery event. And that gives us confidence that the process has balance, um, that we're not always going one way or the other. And we'll always be doing that back testing to make sure that that hasn't crept in. Great, thanks. So it's a really important topic. We could talk about it for a long time. Yep. If you want any more information, um, viewers, please go to our website to look at our policies and so on. But thanks for watching this film and look out for other films in the series on investing in private companies at Bailey Gifford.